Hi everyone, I want to talk to you about books today and I love books and I think many of the people in our 16 Me community are, are readers too. Uh, we always share our favorite books on our Patreon group and it amazes me the amount that people sometimes read. But we always have, I think, those books that we go back to, the ones that are you know, special to us, that have had some significance in our own lives. And um, you know, I, I, for me, there's a, there's a book that I would give as a, to a friend if they were challenged by something or just wanting some reassurance as an older woman and uh, I want to share that with you and get your your thoughts on, on the books that you would recommend uh, to give someone as a gift if they were just you know working through that aging process that we're all here doing and wanting some uh, some reassurance about the kind of the guidelines the things that we can do to, to make it a little easier journey now the book that I picked up the other day and I just remembered how much it impressed me was the book by um, um, Anne Morrow Lindbergh which is called A Gift from the Sea now, Anne Mara Lindbergh, as you may or may not know, was the wife of Charles Lindbergh, you know, the very famous aviator. And she actually flew with him and was very much an adventurer um, as well. But she wrote this book, A Gift from the Sea. Um, I don't, I'm not sure of the exact year, but she, she had a very troubled life in some ways, very, and a very con uh, contradictory, complex uh, personality, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But um, besides all of that, she wrote this book, which I think touches a lot of hearts. But uh, she wrote it after her baby uh, was uh, kidnapped and murdered uh, in 1932. It was a drama. I mean, I, not, I don't many of us were there at that time, but she was just really, um, of course, as a mother, you know, dealing with that. And it, and it happened, they wanted money from for the baby. And then they, they even paid the ransom but then they found the child um, you know and it was really really heartbreaking for her and so she had that as a mother to deal with and I think in a way that shook well it shook her like it would shake any of us uh, to the core and she just reassessed her life now she did go on as I said to write lots of books and to travel with her husband and they had a really wonderful um, life together I think um, I don't know about their marriage personally but it just seems like they did a lot of stuff anyway but she um, wrote this book called A Gift from the Sea and in it she delves into the the complexities of life and also the challenges of aging and uh, talks about the I think three things that she feels are really kind of essential to living um, you know an, an easier life to making life less less complicated and more straightforward as you get older and so I'd like to explore some of those and some of them are very very close to my own heart and to my own um, way of doing things. So hopefully you'll feel the same way um, and get something out of it. But the first thing that she talks about was uh, simplicity. And I, I'm, I'm, as you know, a big believer in simplicity. I live in one spa one room. I, I've, I've limited my um, purchases and my possessions over the years. I'm really trying my best to, uh, to live a simpler life. Maybe you are too. But it's all about simplicity as being a way to get through the clutter of life and, you know, really focus on what's important, you know, what, you, what really drives you, what's your, what really are your priorities. And it's all about the beauty, embracing the beauty of less. You know, less is more and simplifying one's surroundings, simplifying one's lifestyle, uh, you know, cutting back on, on consumer madness and purchases, by, buying, um, well, in her case, she probably didn't buy from charity shops, but that we all have a different way of dealing with um, that reality. And she, she just believed in that simplicity um, of, of life. Um, and really being honest with oneself and, and your family, kind of what what's important to you. So simplicity was the first thing. The second thing that she talks about, and Gift from the Sea is really a lot about this, is about solitude. And she wrote this book, I think, when she was at the beach. And she actually, was, it, was, it may have been just after her son was killed. But she went and tried to pull it all together and to find uh, strength and power from solitude. And a lot of us are very familiar with this concept, though, because we, uh, many of us live alone and uh, we're used to doing things for ourselves. And we're used to the place that being deeply you know, in, um, what's the word, like inwardly focused and being quiet and, and, and having solitude as a thread through, you know, your day can bring you an awareness and a, and a peace that uh, that you can't get if you're in the middle of the bustle. Now, some people like the bustle. It, it's, you know, it's a, it's a distraction. But I think what she's saying in the book is this, you know, if you can search for s uh, simplicity and solitude, you will find you know, beauty in the simple moments of contemplation that you that you don't have to go and you know travel the world. You don't have to go and you know do so much with you know physically. You can just be, you know, just be there and fosters a, like a deep sense of uh, connectedness. You know, connectedness to your world, to your life, to your family, 
and so that second um, pivot of solitude. Now I'm I'm a I'm actually a pretty qu quiet person in the in most of my day. I actually. Um, you know, like to uh, go out with friends and I like to travel and all those things, but I'm not, um, you know, out in the world all the time. I, I'd rather have like one-on-one -on -one friendships. That's kind of my thing. Although there's like hundreds of thousands of you out there and I'm, 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 I feel connected to you. And it's just the same, like, but those moments of connection come in, in moments of silence, in solitude. Um, another thing is to uh, embrace the journey with grace. Now, I have a little teeny bit of a problem with this because I'm not sure that aging gracefully is the message that I want to deliver, uh, many people would say aging disgracefully is a better way to go or, you know, adventurously or creatively or passionately. There's lots of other adverbs that would might suit you better. What is your adverb for aging? Aging. But anyway, she believed in aging gracefully and her, I think her idea of grace though wasn't um, quiet and, and uh, like non-active. I, I'll tell you the, book she, the other book she wrote, so you'll know that's not the case necessarily, but it's just, um, you know, knowing that she has to go deeper, quieter, simpler, in order to follow the journey of aging with open arms, you know, not feeling like you're missing something or that you you had regrets that you can't let go of. I mean, all that kind of stuff. So I think that that idea of, um, you know, embracing the journey, however you want to do it, but she liked gracefully as a word. And I think in a way, grace, has uh, gives you permission i think to be kind and permission to be soft around the edges you know we can just be compassionate to each other and to ourselves i think that's super important so she as, as a woman she you know she really i think inspired a lot of people has anybody read this book has anybody else read a gift from the sea by anne morrow Lindbergh? yeah she i mean she wrote um, what other books she wrote she wrote i mean you get the names of these because they're really cool North to the Orient, which was her account of her travels across the North Pacific to Asia. She wasn't sitting at home all the time. Listen, the wind is an account of her experiences flying across Africa and South America with her husband. She wrote the wave of the future, which is a confession of faith. She said her exploration of political and social issues. Now she and her husband, uh, many of you know this, and I'm I'm not taking you know any I'm not going to take any judgment on this, but they were uh, politically active and they were controversial. Let's put it that way. They had views that you know not everybody would agree with. And so I think when you come into a book and you're reading a book and interpreting and recommending, you have to kind of put it on the literary level and not on the personal level. I can't um, say that I agree with her political beliefs and her husband's, but uh, it doesn't matter to me because she she was a woman, you know, and she dove deep into her womanhood and the, the fears and the insecurities and the mother, the mothering thing. I don't know if she had more children, actually. That's a good question for me. Um, I, but she you know, obviously was severely impacted by what happened to her. But um, you know, she wrote The Steep Ascent, too, which is essays that she wrote on motherhood, marriage, spirituality. So she's done a lot of, um, of things. And I think that as a woman on the journey, dealing with complexity, dealing with a husband that maybe has some different beliefs and dealing with a, a relationship. That was what her whole thing was about. We have to find a way to live simply with, you know, with sol in solitude and also in a way that, um, you know, we feel like we're making a difference, that we're engaged and somehow we're living gently, kindly with grace. Now that's her word. Mine would be more living beautifully or living passionately, but uh, what's yours? How are you aging? Anyway, I hope this has been interesting or helpful. I, I now and again pick up a book that just I know impacted me. I probably should have read some quotes from it because that's where I think the heart of it is in the words, not in the person that wrote the words, because she was a product of her complexity. And, and aren't we all? <laughs> aren't we all products of our complexity? I think that's a really good uh, message for all of us. But any, I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did like this article, please like it, you know, give it a give it a thumbs up because that allows our friends at YouTube to spread the word. And that's what we need. More women uh, like you on this journey, trying their best to do what they can to make it meaningful and happy and to balance all this stuff, these relationships and, and c complexity of choices and, you know, and life decisions and to live maybe more so it was in solitude now and again, appreciating that, living with simplicity and aging with grace or without grace, however you want to live it, but living in your, to your values, living in the way that you want to live. No one else, just you. This is your time. 
have a really wonderful day everybody i hope that you're doing great i really do hope that you're that, that you're having a good uh, you know time so far in this beautiful journey every day on the planet special to me so i'm i'm grateful for you <laughs> and, I, and i hope that you're grateful for each other and for me leave comments you know leave some comments below let us know what book you would give to someone as a gift and let us know how you want to age what adverb okay everyone take really good care sending you lots and lots of love bye-bye for now